Hi, I'm Dr. Charlie. I'm a lead GP and a senior university clinical educator. In this video, we'll discuss diabetes emergency, including DKA or diabetes ketoacidosis, HSS, hyperosmolar, hyperglycemic state, and hypoglycemia. We will discuss diabetes sick day rule, what medication we should stop and when we can restart, we will then explore how we can manage insulin in acute illness. Coming right up. People with diabetes do not necessarily experience more illness than those without. If diabetes is not managed well during illness, it can escalate to more serious conditions such as DKA, HSS or acute kidney injury AKI. During illness, the body is more resistant to insulin leading to rise in blood glucose. The aim of managing diabetes during intercurrent illness are 1. Manage blood glucose level 2. Ensure hydration and adequate calorie intake 3. Check and manage ketone level 4. Recognize when medical attention is needed This medical condition may include chest infection, urine infection, cold, influenza, diarrhea vomiting, major injury or even before major surgery we have a mnemonic for general advice called SICK, S-I-C-K. S stands for sugar. During illness, blood glucose tend to rise despite lower calorie intake, so patients need to check blood glucose more often, such as two to four times daily. Patients on insulin may also need to increase insulin dosage. I stands for insulin. Never stop insulin. C stands for carbohydrates, which can be as simple as two to three biscuits or a piece of toast. Hydration um, should be with fluid with at least 100 ml um, or half a cup every hour. Maintain sugary free fluid when the blood glucose is high and sugary drink when blood glucose is low. K stands for ketone. In type 1 diabetes, check ketone level every 2 to 4 hours and give extra rapid acting insulin if ketones are present and drink plenty of fluid. Next, there are certain medications that we should stop during intercurrent illness. The mnemonic that we use here is SATMAN. S stands for SGLT2 such as dapagliflozin, it can lead to dehydration and DKA. A stands for ACE inhibitor, such as Ramipril, it can lead to AKI. D stands for diuretic, such as Frusamide and Indapamide, it can lead to AKI. M stands for Metformin, it can lead to lactic acidosis. A stands for ARB, such as Losartan, it can lead to AKI. And finally, N stands for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as naproxen and ibuprofen. It can also lead to AKI. We advise that the patient stop this medication when they are feeling unwell. Once the patient starts to feel better and start eating and drinking properly for 24 to 48 hours, these medication can be restarted. Let's talk more about diabetes emergency. DKA or diabetes ketoacidosis happen when there is a severe lack of insulin. Remember, insulin function like a key unlocking the tissue to allow the glucose in. When the body cannot utilize blood glucose, it will start breaking down its own body fat, releasing chemical called ketones. Too much ketones make the blood more acidic, called acidosis, which can be life-threatening. DKA is serious and requires hospital admission. It usually occurs in type 1 diabetes and occasionally in type 2. Symptoms of DKA 
can be remembered as four T's. Toilet more often, thirsty, tired, thin, losing weight. Other symptoms of DKA may include sickness, confusion, abdominal pain, high blood sugar, and sweet smell breath. The symptoms can occur pretty quickly within 24 hours. Principle for DKA admissions are D stands for diabetes with blood glucose of more than 11. K stands for ketone with blood ketone level of more than 3. Do not rely on urine ketones level. And A stand for acidosis with pH level in the blood gas of less than 7.3, bicarbonate of less than 15, and an iron gap of more than 12. Physical sign for DKA may include dehydration, tachycardia, tachypnea, urine ketone of 2 plus. Also be aware of euglycemic ketoacidosis when the patient is on SGLT2. Hyper or smaller hyperglycemic state HSS occur in type 2 diabetes when blood glucose levels become very high, usually more than 30 or 40, and usually take several days to develop and tend to occur when type 2 diabetic patients stop their medication when they become unwell. The symptoms may include thirst, urine frequency, dehydration, confusion. The difference between DKA and HSS is that in HSS it does not create ketones as in type 2 diabetes the patient will still be making some insulin. The key signs to look for in HSS are hypovolemia and dehydration. Let's discuss advice we should give to patients on insulin when they become unwell. As mentioned before, they should be checking their blood sugar every 2-4 to four hours. In type 2 diabetes, you want to aim blood glucose level below 13 and continue the same regimen. If the patient is on basal insulin such as Lanctus and the BM level is between 13 to 17, you want to give extra 2 units. If the patient is on premixed insulin such as Novomix 30 and the BM level is between 11 and 17, you also want to give extra 2 units. If the blood glucose level is between 17 and 22, you want to give extra 4 units. And if the blood glucose level is more than 22 units, you want to give extra 6 units. Check blood glucose level every 4 hours until it reaches below 13. Then the patient should go back to their normal regimen. In type 1 diabetes, the target is to have blood glucose level below 13 and ketone level below 1.5. The regimen in type 1 diabetes is a bit more complicated and I will leave you the link to follow in the description below. Hypoglycemia happen when blood glucose level become too low, usually below 4, and it can happen quite quickly. Symptoms may include being shaky, sweaty, having palpitation, confusion, restlessness, or even passing out. Hypoglycemia can happen when the patient not having enough food or carbohydrate, having too much exercise, having alcohol on empty stomach, or even have too much insulin. Treatment of hypo is with sugary drink, fruit juice, five jelly babies, or even five spoonful of sugar in warm water. We also advise the patient have 15 grams of carbohydrate after, such as a piece of fruit or a sandwich. If the patient is on insulin, we advise the patient reduce dose insulin by 20%. Thank you for watching this video and why don't you check out a video I made on traffic light system to hypertension diagnosis and hypertensive emergency. 
don't forget to like and subscribe to my GP Team Academy channel. And until next time.